Welcome. Welcome to week six of MPAI 760 here at Georgetown Applied Intelligence Program. I just want to start off with announcements. Uh, your mid -pap midterm paper is due right now, uh, depending on when you're seeing, you're watching this. I might have been done yesterday. Uh, I went over a lot of guidance at the, at the uh, session we had last week, so I look forward to uh, your answers on the, on the midterm paper. And then the job talk, again, we had it on Tuesday. Um, I want to just extend out uh, what I said. Uh, and for those of you who haven't had me in a class before, you know, I see myself as a resource for you going forward. So if there's issues with jobs, careers, career transitions, please let me know. Uh, I'm amenable to talking on the phone, grabbing a cup of coffee. If you want to link in with me on LinkedIn, you're, you're more than welcome to do that. I think that's what you get as tuition-paying members of, of Georgetown University. And if, uh, depending on when you graduate, uh, even if a year from now, when you're out of this program and you're, you're looking at potential options, don't hesitate to drop me a line then either. You know, I think, uh, I personally, speaking for myself, again, see myself as a resource for you uh, from here on in. So week five, I... Uh, Policy and intelligence contracting uh, were, were the topics. And again, I, I know a lot of people were, were wrapped up in the midterm, so I, I didn't want to go too much in depth in this week. But I do want to just say that uh, the, some of the problems with intelligence contracting, the, the financial incentives. Uh, contractors work for money. They work for a profit. They work for stockholders. They do not work for the government. They're a client of the government. Uh, that is an important distinction, uh, and sometimes it gets a little bit, I don't want to say shady, but I'll go ahead and say shady, when such and such contractor, Lockheed Martin, uh, who makes big F-35s and large contracts for the Navy, uh, also brief intelligence to the president, and there's certainly a perverse incentive to brief your intelligence that there's a big threat if the rest of your business unit uh, is going to make money off of a littoral ship that they sell to the, the, the U.S. government. So, again, per, contracts follow financial incentives. They don't necessarily follow government. We've talked about politicization of intelligence prior to that, and this is another way that intelligence could get politicized uh, through, through use of different contracting. And then I'd also just say accountability. Uh, defense contractors don't have the same levels of accountability as if you were a military officer or you're in the government. And I'll, I'll bring up the Abu Ghraib example. Uh, I brought this up at the job talk, but just to reiterate, uh, none of the contract interrogators who worked for Khaki got in any trouble, at least any overt trouble, while all the privates and specialists and captains that were in the National Guard did get in trouble. Um, I, I don't... And I, again, they don't fall under UCMJ, contractors don't. Uh, sometimes their actions are a lot less visible than uniformed or government folks. And I, I do think there's a lack of accountability for contractors. Uh, Blackwater is another case for those of you who are old enough to remember what happened in 2007 in, Tahir, in uh, Fedora Square in, in Iraq, where a bunch of Blackwater troops essentially murdered uh, and I'll, I'll say that, essentially murdered uh, Iraqi citizens. Uh, that was a, and very few had the level of justice that you would if you were a, a military green suit or a civilian. Uh, what I will say about this, uh, and this goes into our larger terrorism example, because I was in Iraq at that time. Whenever you have an outside entity, like a Blackwater or a government contractor, that's going to raise more of an alarm than if it was Iraqis killing Iraqis. And I give you the, the example, because when I was there, yeah, Blackwater killed 12 people in, in Baghdad, but at the same day, 200 people were killed in an IED attack. And hundreds were, or 100 people were dying every day from death squads and other, other issues in 2007. But because it was an outside entity, an American contracting company that was involved... That was far worse. That the, the dozen people killed was far more news in Iraq 
than the hundreds killed on Iraqi on Iraqi violence. And it's the dynamic is if it's an outsider causing casualties, if it's an outsider killing people, then that's the bigger issue than than you know, a fellow nationalist on nationalist violence. So I just want to make sure that concept is clear. And then just going back to the accountability point, Snowden, uh, Booz Allen really didn't get a whole lot of punishment for Snowden. At Snowden, for those of you who don't know, was a Booz Allen employee, and Booz Allen is one of the large defense contractors and intelligence contractors here in D.C. Um, they still got defense contracts. They still got, you know, I don't think any of their business was lost because of Snowden. Um, so that, that goes to the, the accountability issue that you might have or lack ha or not have in intelligence contracting. Now, the advantage, I think most people pointed this out, mass hires. Uh, you know, you could say we do this to ourselves if you want to be a federal employee. But federal employee, there's rules and regulations for hiring. There's pensions that you have to pay out. There's uh, civil service protections that prevent people from being fired. Uh, you don't have to do that with contracting. And that allows you to just mass hire. I need 15 people to work this issue. Boom, you can hire them a lot faster and get them a lot uh, equipped and sent to do an, a, a task a lot quicker than if federal employees did it. That's probably the advantage of intelligence contracting. That's why I think intelligence contracting is going to be with us uh, probably in our lifetimes as well. And then the other advantage uh, going along with the mass hire, especially when we're in the cyber realm, um, the contracting will pay a lot more, and you could hire a lot more talent than you would if you made the cyber analysts or computer science specialists as federal employees. So, again, advantages, disadvantages of intelligence contracting. I think a lot of us hit 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 it this past or hit on those issues this past week. So, week six, uh, comparative counterterrorism policy. We're going to look at uh, outside the United States, Great Britain, Israel. China, Latin America, uh, we're going to do a whole around-the-world counterterrorism policy. And as you're going through the readings, just you know, try and answer these questions. What works? What doesn't work? Uh, you know, what's effective? That should be question one. Question two is, okay, democracies have a little bit of a disadvantage than autocracies or other totalitarian states. Um... So think about that, and that's a big question that you're going to be asked in the discussion section, is, okay, what, uh, what is the, the uh, uh, tools that are available or what are the advantages and disadvantages, uh, what can an autocracy do a democracy can't? So think about that, again, as you're going through this week's readings. Uh, and then there's a question on Catalonia. It's always an attempt to bring current events into this issue. Um, and the question that comes up, you know, for those who don't know, Catalonia voted to try and separate from Spain. And the question is, OK, is that going to lead to some sort of terrorist activity uh, or some sort of political violence or something along those lines uh, as we go forward? So that's uh, week six in a nutshell. If there's any questions or issues, please let me know. And I look forward to talking to you this week.